Welcome uh, to the decennial anniversary seminar of the Teachers Academy. It's probably the coolest seminar this spring with the coolest name, decennial. I kind of like that. So uh, some of you had a slide, uh, uh, centennial. We got 90 years until we get that, but uh, we're close, so at least uh, 10 years. Uh, uh, my name is Eric Carver. I coordinate the Teachers Academy. That's one of the tasks I have. And I'll also be hosting or facilitating or being a cruise captain for the journey today. Uh, I'll briefly talk about the seminar program, and then we'll move on uh, with the speakers. We have many distinguished speakers today uh, on this special occasion. So we have two parts for the seminar. The first part, part is called Reflections. So we're looking back uh, to the impact uh, that the Academy has had for 10 years. Our rector will talk about that. But also we'll, uh, we'll have uh, a look into the history, kind of the roots of why we have a Teachers Academy to begin with. Then we'll uh, go into uh, research done on the members. Uh, there's two surveys that have been done five years after, after the, the Academy was founded, and again this year, 10 years into that. And then we'll have two career stories or uh, reflections, personal reflections um, on the impact that the, the membership has had uh, on two people's careers. Then we'll have a break, and after the, uh, the break, we'll go into uh, the future portion uh, of the seminar. So uh, the Teachers Academy will publish its new vision and goals today, exciting. And then we'll have a speaker from our cousin, Teacher Academy from University of Oslo, Arndt Maso. Uh, we'll talk about uh, how he sees what Teachers Academy should be doing to be relevant in the future. And then the final portion of the seminar is a panel where we'll discuss the kind of future of university teaching that we want to see. So that's our program. But we'll start by asking a dear friend of the Teachers Academy, Kai Nurlund, to open the seminar. Please have a hand when everybody comes in. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure, a pleasure to be here and honor to be opening this. Uh, and uh, actually, before I uh, give my actual opening remarks, I might uh, make a remark on the dress code. So uh, just to clarify, I will go and change the tailcoat after this uh, for the evening party. Uh, so. But yeah, it's, a, it's indeed a pleasure to be here. Uh, this is a very important event in many ways. Uh, it is uh, one of the key parts also of the celebratory year of teaching, Opetta Jura Juhlavuosi, which our rector Sari announced uh, in, uh, at the beginning of the academic year. This has been a year where we have explored uh, university teaching from many, many points of view. We had uh, numerous events and we'll still have uh, several uh, uh, during, this, uh, during this spring, uh, but, uh, but this, uh, this together with the uh, the uh, learning adventure of Pemiseikalu we had a, a couple of months ago, I think are the absolute highlights of this celebratory year of teaching. And this indeed is the major celebration we are having uh, here today and uh, tonight. And uh, I'll just give a, a short reflection on uh, the nature of uh, the Teachers Academy. Uh, it has the name uh, acad uh, word academy in the in the name, and in Finland uh, we do have uh, many academies. Uh, uh, we have four science academies: uh, two for uh, all of science and two for technical sciences. Uh, and these uh, science academies uh, bring together uh, some of the most uh, accomplished uh, researchers in Finland, uh, and uh, they are uh, working essentially on a voluntary basis. Uh, and uh, indeed bring together people interested in science uh, and uh, to discuss and promote high-level science. And I think this has a clear uh, analogy to this Teachers Academy, uh, where we bring, uh, bring together the best uh, t uh, teachers we have uh, at our university, uh, and uh, many, some of have to left to other universities, so we start to have uh, some national reach already. Uh, and uh, soon we will hear about, hear about an international uh, fr friend uh, uh, doing a similar activity. Uh, so we are gathering here really the best, uh, best teachers of our uh, university to get, gather together, exchange experiences and promote high level university uh, teaching uh, as uh, the rest of today will show in an exemplary manner. 
Um, the other aspect I'd like to bring uh, is uh, that uh, these uh, science academies uh, are quite old. Uh, the oldest one was uh, uh, founded by uh, Charles Alexander uh, uh, there some almost 200 years ago. Uh, and this also gives uh, a minor uh, challenge, uh, but also a very good outlook uh, for this academy. Uh, you already heard that uh, some people have mistaken this for a centennial. Well, it's not a centennial, it's a decennial celebration, but uh, we can put a very good aim on uh, looking forward to the centennial uh, celebration. Uh, and uh, we may not be there, but it uh, may be actually some of our students might uh, actually be at the centennial celebration of this academy, uh, and certainly their students. So keep this in mind. This is a very important activity which go very far in the future. The future will definitely look different uh, in 100 years from where, or 90 years from where we are now, but definitely uh, high-level teaching uh, for, uh, for humans will still be the key part of our uh, uh, society. So with these uh, brief opening words, I thank you, welcome you all, and look forward to the uh, rest of today's program. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kai. Uh, we have two keynote uh, speeches today for each part of the seminar, and, and I'm very happy to welcome our rector, uh, Sari Lindblom, uh, to, uh, to give the keynote speech about the impact that the Teachers Academy has had on the university. Everybody here knows Sari, so I won't go very deeply into the introductions, but she's, of course, the former head of um, University Center for University Teaching and Learning, HUPE, and also has been the president uh, for early. So those are the, so, 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 just the few things uh, that she's done. But I think in this context, I think her career, she's been a champion for university pedagogy. So she is the best person, I think, to give the keynote today. So thank you, Sarin. Hyvät opetusakateemikot, ihanat kollegat ja ystävät, hyvät juhlavieraat, dear guests. Uh, I was thinking that maybe this is, this is more like a rector's speech, but I'm going to stick to the title I was given, because it feels that um, keynote is far in, in my, my past <laughs> to give keynote. So I have actually really written it uh, down and, and trying to go through the, the how I see as the rector, now the rector of the university, how I see the impact of the teacher's academy when, when I look back the last 10 years. So as we all know, this academy was founded during Jukka Kola's term as vice rector of the university. During the last term of his uh, term as, as vice, uh, vice rector before be, he became rector of the university. And I know that many of the people present here had, had been uh, actively going through the very, very long and thorough process when we founded the, the teacher's academy. And um, I followed very closely what, what happened, but I was not in, 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 among the core, core people, but you, you were there together with Jukka Kola. Um, unfortunately, maybe uh, Eric will uh, say something about Jukka later, but he, he could not participate in, in this seminar because of its duties as rector of the University of Turku, but he also through me, he sends all of you warm regards from the old capital of, of Finland. It has been crystal clear to me from the beginning when we started to uh, design what kind of academy we want to found at, at our university. So the, the impact has been very clear to me from the beginning, even before it was founded. And um, of course, um, I could end here and say that the impact is great, <laughs> but I still would like to go through some, some ideas which has been in, in my head since, since Teachers Academy were, were founded. Um, to me, and at least uh, to my knowledge, this academy, this Teachers Academy, is very different from any other Teachers Academies in the world. And I try to explain why I, why I think so. Um, First of all, teachers apply themselves to the Teachers Academy. 
but at the same time they they have the full support from their faculties from their colleagues and also from their students and at, at least when i was uh, actively involved in the selection process of teachers to the academy i think i always looked very closely to, especially to how colleagues, students and, and the faculty supported the applications. But this is different from many teachers' academies in the world because very often they are nominated by, by bosses, by, by the rector or vice rector or by deans or your superiors. And this is very different from, from many other, um, many other um, uh, uh, teachers' academies. And I think this is one of the key uh, elements why there is so much impact of our teachers' academy, because this um, being supported by the university community, that, that builds creative, uh, credibility, impact, and also great value to the, to the teachers' academy and teachers, the OPE academic or teachers' academy members themselves. And the second very important aspect is that financial support is not only allocated to teachers' academy members, but it instead also to the closest communities of the selected teachers' academy members. I know at least when I was involved during the very first year of teachers' academy, there were a lot of discussions between the deans and the teachers' academy members whether this community funding belonged to the faculties and I know some cases that it was kind of um, adopted to the faculty level but then later the, the rules were changed that they actually need to be the closest communities of the future academy members and I think this is really really important so I think this is really um, support not just for one person, but the, the, the close colleagues is, is really, really valuable. And I think this was a brilliant decision, one of the most brilliant decisions when this was founded. And we, sh we can see from the research, and probably doesn't come to in, in the stories later on, but we, we know that research, which is carried out by teachers' academy members and also by HUPE uh, experts, is that by underlining the importance of the community of the teachers of our university, that enhances inclusivity and the importance of the Academy of, 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 to the University of Helsinki. And then the third um, dimension and, and important element in, in, in the impact is, uh, and was probably the most difficult for me, because that was something that I initiated, it was that pedagogical experts, so HUPE, community, our, our excellent pedagogical experts at the, at the university, they became collaborators, but they could not apply to the Teachers' Academy. And this, um, and of course, then HUPE coordinates, as now it's Eric's duty to coordinate the activities. So they were closely married together, but Teachers' Academy, or HUPE staff could, not, could never become Teachers' Academy members. And this is important because otherwise it would have started to look, especially at the beginning, kind of a network of um, exclusive network of pedagogical experts. And that would have probably decreased the impact of, of the whole teacher's academy. But now instead it is a multidisciplinary network of our own teachers. But of course, there is a high requirement that you have to be an expert of your own disciplinary field and this needs to be combined with pedagogical competence. So it is a lot required to anybody who, who wants to apply to the academy. But it is really, um, I think, the know-how by their own example, they, they, they promote high quality or they, you, academy members, promote high quality university teaching in all faculties of the university. And then fourthly and finally, the impact of Teachers Academy on the enhancement of the quality of teaching has been, and it is still, as we will see later on, investigated by HUPE staff and academy members, and very often in collaboration, which I think it's really important as well. 
So this is absolutely important um, that our decision concerning uh, our decisions concerning the future of teaching and learning on, or strategic decisions concerning towards what direction we want to develop our teaching and learning practices is informed by discipline-specific empirical evidence of factors both enhancing or impeding quality of teaching and learning. And maybe you have heard me saying this hundreds of times, but for, to me, this is the most important principle, bringing value and impact to the, to the Teachers' Academy of the University of Helsinki. So as Kai mentioned, this academic year we have celebrated anniversary year for teaching. And there are many reasons for this, but one important reason is our Teachers' Academy and Academy members themselves. You as members have clearly raised the profile of university teachers by being role models of highly skilled teachers. And I think when we look towards the future, it is really important that you are examples to our future teachers. And of course, during this academic year, uh, in, in, um, with the help of Kai and Susanna, you have also um, we have been thinking of what we want to become when we grow older, towards our 400 years, what kind of teaching and study practices we want to develop. And this is really important as we have, uh, we have learned that how much situation has, because of COVID, um, uh, changed during the last years. And, and, and maybe the corona pandemic was the last driving factor in, in terms of how much digital we want to become in, in the future. But it is really, really important to really sit down and think what we want to do, because we, don't, we cannot go back how we were before COVID, but we cannot become a distant university or digital university. So there, it needs to be a combination of these two. But how in this, uh, then this group, Hype and, um, and uh, the Teachers Academy have a very important role in, in, in thinking of this. So we are truly facing something new and um, we really cannot build future by looking back. So we need uh, new teaching and learning methods. I don't yet know what they will be, but I'm sure there will be new ones, but we need to base them on research evidence. This is really, really important. And also, we need a lot of creativity, we need a lot of uh, collaboration, and we need a lot of room for experiments. And all this we can do together with Teachers Academy, because you and Hype, they, uh, both of you have an important role if we look at the whole university community, whole community of 40,000 people. You, are, you have already shown, both of you, that you, you are very well able to, to carry out transdisciplinary collaboration. You have a lot of experiences of how to develop new teaching and learning methods and how to support students to really help to further develop their own teaching and uh, their learning practices. And maybe one thing of the Jubilee year I want to mention is the teaching philosophy, which is uh, under reconstruction, so to say. Um, I already said in my speech in our anniversary celebrations that digitalization has concretized what previously did, did not need to be emphasized, that an individual needs another one to learn and to develop. So the future of higher education is created together by researching, teaching, and, and thinking about what is possible and desirable. So there is, of course, no right way to, to teach or learn, but when we develop teaching and learning practices, we need to take individual needs into account, individual needs of both students and staff, and in this way we can also take care of well-being and hopefully also reduce workload and stress. During these Ten years I have followed with pride and joy and pleasure how academy members have become valued at the university. They are, or you are, valued by colleagues, by students, and also by leadership. And this, I think, is the why, why so many of you have 
gained or taken very important positions in your own faculties. So you, you, many of you carry key roles and, and being a member of Teachers Academy probably is one thing which has helped you, helped you in your leadership careers. So I want to congratulate all Teachers Academy members for your outstanding achievements and I really wish a bright future of the Teachers Academy of the University of Helsinki and hopefully for, for the centennial at least. So, thank you. Thank you, Sari, for those kind words um, for the Academy. Uh, we're going to move on and we're going to look back into history. And as some of you might remember, uh, as the rector said, the, the previous vice rector 10 years ago, Jukka Kola was supposed to be here to reflect on the past, but because of his duties at the University of Turku, he could not make it. But here's, here's his regards. Uh, I'm unfortunately not able to attend tomorrow this important Teachers Academy Decennial Anniversary Seminar. I appreciate it very much indeed that you invited me to your seminar. Thank you very much. Smiley face. <laughs> Please forward my warmest feel, uh, greetings and thanks to all Teachers Academy people and its friends. So there you go. But we are, luckily have a person who can reflect on the past as, much, as well or even better than uh, Kola, and that is Aulitu. She's been an uh, advocate and supporter of the Teachers Academy uh, since its founding and even before that. And of course, she's now currently the director of HYPE uh, and also vice dean for research at the Faculty of Educational Sciences. So we're going to welcome Auli and she's going to share the historical insight into why we have a teacher's academy in the first place. So please give a warm uh, welcome to Auli too. Good afternoon, uh, everyone, and thank you very much for inviting me to give this talk uh, today. And my warmest congratulations to the Teachers Academy, which I am also really proud of. I actually was the one who suggested that Jukka Kola should be here because we collaborated really closely. Uh, and although he is currently at University of Turku and working as a rector there, so I would really be willing to hear that how he would memorize that what happened and why everything was done. I have my own story and my understanding, but unfortunately he couldn't come. So maybe some other, other time and maybe when we have 15th year celebration or 20 years. So hopefully then. But I will briefly tell uh, that what, what happened and how everything was done and what were the reasons. So, so this is the, uh, the talk related to that. So. Um, my understanding is that the big idea behind Teachers Academy and it, its establishment is uh, or was to uh, promote scholarship of teaching and learning at, at University of Helsinki. We had uh, many really good developments ongoing already before Teachers Academy was established, but still uh, there was a clear need and to strengthen further uh, the scholarship of teaching and learning among the whole university staff and like raise the awareness of uh, our staff and also outsiders that what kind of expertise and even hidden expertise we have related to supporting learning and teaching in uh, throughout uh, the university and throughout the faculties. We know based on research that scholarship of teaching and learning is a key capability that is required in high quality teaching. So it is uh, really <laughs> wise to try to promote it uh, in a variety of ways. And we know it, uh, that it contributes, it contributes to teachers increased awareness of relationship between teaching and learning. So teachers really know that when I do something, so how it influences to students and what happens in students' mind and learning processes when I do some kinds of things as a teacher. It is related to development of um, pedagogical practice, practices and innovations in university teaching, also to student engagement and deep approach to learning. So it really, as you know, it really matters how we, how we teach. 
and at the end, uh, what kind of uh, skills and knowledge and capabilities students learn when we teach them. So teaching really matters, and as one of the students once said, all students participate to teaching and our seminars and courses, so it, the impact is really, really high. Uh, and we know also based on research that uh, uh, scholarship of teaching and learning is something that we can develop. It is not an innate ability, it is not a personality trait that someone has or someone hasn't, but it is really a, key, a skill and capability and knowledge that people can really learn. So it is wise to support it in a variety of ways as well. And we know that by organizing pedagogical education, uh, by organizing uh, interdisciplinary contexts, by increasing the emphasis and importance of teaching merits in evaluations and recruitment processes, these all have influence on, on the, Im and the impact uh, to the development of scholarship of teaching and learning. And all those three things were already done at the University of Helsinki. So then it was, uh, at least to us, it appeared to be quite natural that, of course, we need something even more and something that really uh, explica explicates and raises the status uh, of teaching and teaching, teaching excellence in, in university. And then uh, the academy uh, was established. And then I go more to the practical things and what we did uh, in order to make um, teachers academy to, to happen. Uh, and the, according to my understanding, uh, the first thing was that the idea uh, of Teachers Academy was uh, presented by docent Eva Pyörälä uh, during the, uh, the vice rector's rounds uh, that Jukka Kola made uh, in all faculties, as our current rectors also uh, do. And Eva suggested that why shouldn't we have this kind of academy as uh, many medical schools and really top level universities around the world have. And then Jukka thought that maybe why not, and quite quickly established uh, a group, uh, a small working group uh, to, to write something down that what, what it could be. And we had a small uh, a working group where Eva and I were members. Minna was the secretary, also Jaakko was the member, Jaakko Kurhila, and then Hannu Saarilahti as well, and then Jukka Kola. And we did international benchmarking, uh, wrote some research background regarding scholarship of teaching and learning, some tentative criteria, basic principles and budgeting things. And then Jukka um, brought it to the University of Helsinki board that this is what we think that it could be. Uh, it could be in uh, University of Helsinki, so what do you think? And they, were, uh, they encouraged us to go further and uh, gave, gave more detailed instructions that what should be prepared and what kind of things should be ready so that uh, at the end uh, we could decide that uh, academy uh, could be established. And then we continued the work and basically in the big things that uh, still are in place um, nowadays, so they were the ones that our, our group actually <laughs> designed together. And when I look now uh, what we wrote then, and what, when I look at the, what academy does nowadays, so I can say that the basic idea that was set then, it has uh, become true and it is evolved and developed much further, I think, that we never ever thought. So it is a network for enthusiastic and committed teachers who really have invested time and effort on enhancing student learning. Uh, it is an opportunity to earn merit and uh, reward members who have done, done these kind of things, uh, in addition to their research work and administration. Um, and all, I can also see that uh, both individuals and communities are encouraged to do the development in a variety of ways, and this really happens. And uh, as we heard and had from the rector's talk, and also we have seen in many ways, uh, the establishment of academy uh, has clearly indicated for the whole university community that it, teaching is really valuable and quality teaching is like super <laughs> important and it is a characteristic of, of top level university uh, as well. 
and we still aim to uh, promote the quality of teaching and improve its status. I think that this is still our uh, goal in, in terms of the academy. Still improve the quality of learning and re learning results. Uh, it is still an important step in a teacher's career. Also, the improve the status of teaching qualifications and uh, their documentation. I think that Teachers Academy has done a lot of that work as well. And above all, it is a wonderful multidisciplinary uh, collaborate, <laughs> community of teachers who collaborate and who almost always have a lot of fun together, which is really, really important. And Rector already said that how, how in variety of ways, university benefits uh, from uh, the academy, and I can completely agree what uh, she already said. Uh, the potential of high quality pedagogical e expertise is used for the best of all students and teachers in the whole university, not only among the academy members. Uh, and we, at the end, which is, I think, the most important thing still, we invest on teachers, uh, students' learning and their, their learning results and what kind of academic expertise they learn during the university studies. So I think that it is uh, beyond all um, the most important thing. And also, Rector briefly uh, pointed out the unique characteristics of our Teachers Academy. Uh, I have the list here as well. And uh, I think that when we compare with international uh, similar academies, these are the things that are very unique and important for us. And they really reflect that, um, that what are in more general valued at the whole University of, of Helsinki. So it provides a continuum for the career path of individual researchers and teachers who have really invested uh, to the development of teaching. We have really thorough review process, as many of you know, regarding the applications. It is similar to research um, proposals, and that was a very important part when we planned the procedures. We involve students uh, to the selection processes in a variety of ways, and that's really important. And we really, uh, since the beginning uh, of the es es establishment, wanted to emphasize that we really, really reward individual teachers, but they are part of some community that has uh, supported and their development, their growth. So it's really important to give the sign that uh, teaching is also a community thing, not only like individual enterprise. So that's, that's a very important mes message as well. And we have some sort of philosophy or more a deeper thinking behind the academy that what, what we want to gain through it. Uh, we have the scholarship of teaching and learning, thinking behind and also the, uh, the community of practice, how we, how we perceive uh, teaching excellence and how it, how it develops. And we do research on the impact of the academy. I have two more slides regarding our uh, quite uh, recent, or not published, but <laughs> recent results. We have also done research. You probably remember that when you apply to the academy, we ask the permission to use uh, the application documents uh, in the, in the, for the research purposes. And this is what we have partly done. Uh, and in the couple of years ago, I also interviewed together with my many colleagues, the, the very first uh, members of the Teachers Academy and their path uh, to the, towards the academy membership. And this was really even inspiring, I have to say. So that, and the reason why I have it here is that although we are now celebrating your 10th uh, <laughs> Uh, ten, ten year birthday or, or centennial, so the roots are much longer and they go m much um, <laughs> further and more, re more years back uh, compared to, and not only, only ten years. So we, we made uh, together with uh, Eva and Sari and many colleagues uh, the interviews uh, critical incident interviews for uh, selected uh, Teachers Academy members and wanted to uh, find out that how is uh, their path towards uh, 
the excellent teacher and the member, one of the first members of, of our Teachers Academy. And we asked them to mark critical incidents throughout their learning path, uh, where, what has happened and what they have been doing and thinking before becoming the members of the Teachers Academy. And we analyzed uh, the interviews and found uh, quite interesting uh, similarities. And first thing is that many of uh, those who we interviewed started to talk about their school years uh, in primary school or in upper secondary school, uh, what, how they had experienced learning, uh, what kind of uh, own teacher gurus they remember from their childhood, from their uh, <laughs> early, early years. Also, they talked a lot, or you talked a lot about important teachers, how they um, are a sort of models for you to how to support students' learning and how to be a pedagogue. And this was first in, interesting thing and very uh, from far, far, far away. Then uh, many of you or most of you talked about teaching and, and how you experience it uh, to be really rewarding. So that you really clearly uh, explicated how much you enjoy teaching how much you enjoy interacting, interacting with students, how, how important their learning is for you, and how uh, thoroughly you, uh, you read the feedback and how you try to learn from the feedback that you receive from students. Then, uh, third one was uh, also clear from all, all the interviews, your continuous willingness to develop as a teacher. And there you had a variety of ways how you told that you, you do it. You have, many of you have done pedagogical studies. You have a lot of development projects. You uh, always want to learn new uh, teaching and learning technologies and digital technologies and want to try out and test what, what happens. And also you develop all the time new teaching methods and various ways of teaching. And you also had uh, received other teaching awards uh, due to your developments and uh, during your career. And you had uh, many uh, kinds of expert tasks and roles related to uh, leadership of, of teaching at, at university, either in faculty or university level. And you really emphasized uh, your learning and continuous <laughs> need to learn and develop uh, new things as a teacher. And there you clearly mention teaching networks and pedagogical research, what you are doing in, in your teaching. And then, um, <laughs> as you see, many things had happened be before becoming a, a Teachers Academy member. And one more slide, really complicated, but I, but I explain. Uh, quite recently, uh, I, together with Kirsi Pyhältö, analyzed uh, the latest uh, application portfolios uh, to the Teachers Academy. And we especially chose uh, from the portfolios the incidents where the applicants uh, described their own learning. Their own learning that something had changed in their teaching capability or, or <laughs> teaching skills. And we analyzed that which were the contexts of learning that were described. And as you can see from the columns, there are four contexts. And then we analyzed from the same incidents the modes of learning. As you can see, the rows, uh, six different modes of learning. And it was really interesting to see uh, when we look at the context that what are the most important uh, context for learning of our teacher academy applicants, uh, it is teacher-student interaction. So while teaching, we as teachers also, also learn. And maybe this is self-evident, but it, <laughs> it is still quite interesting. I think that we don't very often think how important the interaction with students is for our own learning. And the other one is uh, pedagogical courses. And there I can understand because there are a lot of discussions, new information and knowledge and new people with whom you can discuss. And when we look at the modes of learning, so there are uh, learning by reflecting, learning by teaching, learning by experimenting, modeling, 
inquiring and via feedback. So clearly, the most important modes of learning were reflecting and uh, by receiving feedback. And if we look at where they are located, so reflection in the pedagogical courses and feedback uh, from student-teacher uh, student interaction. And I, I, as a researcher on learning and teaching, find this really interesting and really inspiring. So all these kind of things we can find from the application uh, documents. So the, <laughs> with these words, I really want to congra congratulate you and uh, wish all the good and best luck for, for the future. And I end my talk with this quote, which is also my favorite. One of your colleagues, who I don't reveal who, who <laughs> is behind this quote, uh, has compared the uh, scholarship of teaching with, um, with scholarship of research. So thank you all. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you. Very, very interesting. And, and the segue to the, same, uh, the next segment is pretty, pretty obvious because we're going to look into research done on the members or additional research. There's two surveys been done, 2018 and 2003, and 23, I'm sorry, which of course is very, very re recent and new knowledge. I'll briefly introduce the people behind this research. So we have Hanna Korsberg. She, she's a member of and a former chair of the Teachers Academy, works as a professor at the theater research. Then Eva Pyra was also mentioned. I don't know. The, the idea mother of Teachers Academy, do you accept <laughs> the title? Uh, she works as a university pedagogy uh, teacher uh, in uh, uh, Faculty of Science. Then we have Lisa Beltonen, who's a university lecturer in physiology, Faculty of Medicine. And then we have Dina Eriksson, who's the current chair of the Teachers Academy Board and also Vice Dean for Academic Affairs, Affairs at the Faculty of Arts. So please uh, welcome the four up here. All right, uh, good afternoon to everyone. It's great to be here and congratulations for all of us, whether you are a member or friend or whatever of the Teachers Academy, it's great to be here. Okay, uh, some ideas uh, what we are, uh, have been doing, not only me, but uh, when these colleagues did their first survey on Teachers Academy members, that was five years ago, and now we have uh, conducted a new one, so we will have a little bit discussion of what have been done and what do we feel about. So aims of this presentation are very uh, brief in that sense because we have 20 minutes before uh, Eric will drag us out. And uh, so we will brief, uh, sort of emphasize from our perspective, although Auli and uh, Sari very nicely defined what are the goals and framework of the Teachers Academy. And then also we discuss also the theoretical framework, because of course that's the basement of all research. And then we have the surveys and some preliminary results of that. And then we think of a little bit that how have we achieved those goals that were, have been mentioned and what kind of future challenges do we have? And that's something that we will come back to a bit later. Uh, but just a few things here. That aims of the Teachers Academy, like it was says, was to improve the appreciation, the value of the teaching and status of the teaching in our academic community. And it's really nice that we have been able to spread the word to uh, other community as well. And like has been said, to improve the quality of teaching and learning as well as students' learning outcomes. But it has been really important, and I personally I emphasize this, step for an excellent teacher's career. I'm not saying that I'm not, the, I'm not the excellent research, but it has been important to my career. And that's something that is very interestingly reflected to in our uh, survey. 
but how it has helped us. And I will just emphasize the last thing, and then I give the floor uh, to the colleagues, that the most important issue is that has been already mentioned, that it provides us this interdisciplinary community. And I think that's the core of the Teachers Academy. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tina. Um, and I, I, I truly want to emphasize the last one. As Sari and, uh, and Aule, Aule told us that it was a kind of an innovation we had, that we want to add it uh, at the, commu the community level or communities of practice uh, into the criteria of the academy. And that has been very influential. influential. The other thing was that, you know, in our uh, Teachers Academy Cover, covers the whole university. It's not the fa a faculty level academy. It covers all the disciplines, all campuses and, and faculties um, throughout, throughout Helsinki University. Okay, let's move onwards. So these are the three, uh, I, I, I picked three, you, you said two uh, framework, theoretical frameworks of, of the of our study, uh, and they also match very well with the well with the, the uh, with the frameworks of of the academy. Scholarship of teaching and learning was already explained. Community practice is um, is a social learning theory uh, by Jean Lave and Etienne Wenger, and it emphasizes that you know you bring together people with different backgrounds. And they, uh, they all learn from each other and with each other and produce something new, unexpected, something which has never been there before. And that is very important. I think that's, that's, that's one of the, really the, the, the foundations of this academy. Then uh, I, I've been very interested in also in, in, in a qualitative data on teachers meaningful conversations about teaching and learning. And that was partly because at, at Lund University uh, in Sweden, they did, the, before we, when we um, established the, the, the academy, they had been studying that, that theme. And that is part of our, our research as well. Uh, you've, you've answered an uh, open-ended question on that. Okay, we've, um, these are, couple of studies we've, we, we have uh, published. First, uh, first about the, 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 the applicants in the first round, and then the other one, uh, a comparison be between the applicants of the, of the first round and after five years. And I think we were quite genius. <laughs> that, but, you know, at the moment when we decided to have a f fifth year, five year anniversary jubilee, we decided to collect data, and now we collected the same data. So that was fantastic. Now we are uh, uh, showing you uh, some, some of our results, preliminary results. So we, we collected the data in 2018 and 2023. I'm sorry, I have to change my spectacle because I don't see anything. <laughs> this is always a problem. I have five pairs of spectacles. Okay, um, now I'm just choosing between the two. Okay, uh, we created a survey, online survey, which basically asked uh, uh, questions and, and, and had uh, statements of all the, all the aims of, which we, we've heard about, all the aims of the Teachers Academy, how they had been reached. And, uh, and then in the last uh, survey, we also added some questions about the pandemic. And, and we also have very interesting open-ended questions there, which we haven't yet, yet analyzed. We had good uh, rate of respondents, uh, over 50% 50, 50 in both, 60 or 50, 55% in, in, in both. Most respondents were women, uh, very, very long, with very long teaching experience and extensive university pedagogical training. Um, and this is something I, um, I'm going to show you the, 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 the figures. One interesting thing there is, oh, sorry, where should I, oh. uh, well, if you just look at the position, you can see, uh, rather not just touch that. 
Okay, you see that one third of respondents today are senior lecturers in university pedagogy or senior lecturers in clinical, uh, uh, senior, senior clinical lectures. And also the number of professors has, has increased. That's an interesting change that has taken place in, two, in five years. Then we looked at the, appreci the appreciation of teaching in the academic community. And, um, and the responses were mainly very positive, just like they were the, the last time. Not as positive as five years ago, but very positive. So especially, they were very positive at the university level. And there were slight, uh, you know, you can, you can look at the, the, the other levels, you, the faculty level and unit level, they are slightly, uh, they are slightly uh, kind of less positive. And I think that's one, one um, thing we, if we think about a take home message. How could we improve that? Uh, the appreciation of, of teaching in, um, at those levels. Then the impact on the academic career, the majority, sorry. Can I talk about this? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> sort of, we are improvising. <laughs> yeah, I think now we talk about the academic career. Yeah. And uh, of course, it was then when we started, and it's still now a very important step in our career the membership, the fellowship of, of the Teachers Academy. So, of course, when we think about it, it's, it's a, actually, it is a reward system, after all. The application process is quite competitive, like, like everything in academic world nowadays. It is so. And then we meet the criteria, and, and uh, the criteria are carefully uh, planned and designed, uh, defined by the experts, the educational experts. So when you meet these criteria, of course, you achieved something. So that is absolutely, it's definitely a step forward, but it also might be a step up. And this is the second uh, uh, question that we, or the proposition that we, we made. It's, uh, how has Teachers Academy promoted uh, the fellows' uh, academic career? In that, we can see good developments, but there, that there's, it's not so rosy. The picture is absolutely no, not, not so rosy as we would like it to be. Um, I'll, I'll put this slide here. Oh. No, here. Okay. Oh, wow. I made it. It's an <laughs> right. uh, achievement. This one, upper right. So you can see that uh, there's about 10% increase of those answers that uh, pe people think that it, uh, TA, this fellowship, uh, promoted one's academic career. But there is still these ones and twos, sort of a stagnant phase, that it doesn't promote uh, everybody's careers. And I would like to know why. Why is this? And of course, it is not about our sort of individual thing. It is not an individual thing. It's not even about Teachers Academy. It's also about university. University's policies uh, and the, all the changes that are happening in, in a society. So, and funding, about research funding and things like that. So it's many, the factors, the many, many factors that influence this, this thing. And uh, then this uh, uh, increased, how has uh, Acad Teachers Academy increased the appreciation of teacher, uh, teaching merits? There is a good development during these past five years. It's good. Good one, and we can think about uh, our as individuals. Has it has the, the membership or fellowship uh, promoted our? Uh, has our merits been taken account 
when we are applying our sort of academic positions. Maybe we, we have been successful in this sense. But it's also our members, the members of Teachers Academy, have been serving. As Rector said, Sari said, we've been serving in many, many, in, in the degree programs. People are leading those degree pro programs, and then we are serving in these committees that are uh, sort of assessing those people who are applying for academic positions. So in that way, mm. we can we can say that the appreciation, the, the, my, these might be the mechanisms. Yes, and I may add that fellows expressed challenges in the teacher, teacher's career path in the open-ended answers in the recent survey. So that's something that we need to look more carefully into those open-ended answers. All right, so move onwards. Let's move to networking and interdisciplinary communities, uh, which was one of the which was one of the, the, the criterias and aims of the Teachers' Academy. And when you look at this, uh, when you look at the, the, the figure, you can really see that it has been a successful success story. It has really offered teachers an interdisciplinary community, a community of practice and peer support. And um, not only when, when, when we, when I've been, not so thoroughly uh, analyzed all the open-ended questions, but, but there are references not only to the whole of Teachers Academy, but to smaller communities of practice, uh, which, were, which have been just, you know, uh, me members of Teachers Academy have, had, had, have shared common interest on a topic, such as assessment and emotions, uh, interdisciplinarity, supervision, working life, um, re relevance, and all sorts of topics within the university. So Teachers Academy is not only a huge community, but within the Teachers Academy and Hooper uh, members, well, we have found each other uh, by being interested in the same topics and creating something new. And quite many, many of these groups have, in fact, after five years, have produced something scholarly. So it takes time. It doesn't happen in a year, but it takes some time. Um, then we looked at um, the open-ended questions about teachers' meaningful conversations. And um, this is the same question which we have repeated three times. First first in 2000, uh, 2013, 2018, and now this year. Interestingly, this is very similar result as in all international studies. The most important meaningful conversations about teaching and learning take place with your close colleagues. And that's very important. Um, that, it is important, in, in fact, that you have close colleagues with whom you can really talk about, talk about teaching and learning. Because, you know, I remember in the first, in the first survey, there was somebody who said, I have, no, no, I have nobody except my foreign colleagues. So it's really important to kind of promote that kind of collegial uh, discussions often in informal spaces, spaces such as coffee rooms, corridors, wherever. But Teachers Academy has, has provided new colleagues as well. And this, that, that's you know, important to, to see that Teachers Academy is the second important um, place where you can, uh, or the, the people with whom you talk or you have meaningful conversations, is, takes place in Teachers Academy. It has dropped. Because I, I would say, because of the COVID, we haven't really, um, we haven't really, uh, you know, the time is still in us. We are still a bit, you know, wondering what to do. But Dina, you as a as a chair, as the chair of the board, you will succeed in creating the lively discussions again. Yes, um, I would like to pinpoint there that the. 
conversations with students seem to go down. There are not so many. Uh, they have been partly, partly and mainly might be due to COVID. But there, are, there, there might be other reasons as well. Because, um, because we have gone through so huge changes at the university. And Hanna, would you tell an example of that? For example, from your... Yes, I think that some of the changes have to do with this isopöra, the renewal of the curriculum, because th there has been discussions with students that not all the students do not find uh, the colleagues teaching in the same degree program so close to themselves uh, than earlier, when they have the kind of the same the colleagues from their own discipline, when the, when the co collaboration between the students and the personnel was more on the disciplinary level rather than on the degree program level. And this is something that the students have been expressed, that, 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 they, that they would like to have more, uh, more contact with the degree, uh, not in the degree programs, but in the, for, for the, disip, in the disciplinary level. Yeah, yeah. I think that's something we have to discuss later on. Mm -hmm. And then... Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. okay. Almost uh, done. Up here. What's uh, almost done? done? Okay. Okay, mm. then we move to distance learning. Okay, you're about the distance learning and, and, and teachers' academy. I think this is um, something that we, we know already. We are just a, a bunch of teachers, and we, I think we, our reflections on the remote teaching is, is quite similar as other, other teachers also. Uh, it's, it's quite uh, sort of, I don't think that they are very interesting, these uh, um, results, but uh, uh, the uh, role of uh, Teachers Academy, it's not so uh, big in this issue. But I think universities was very, as a whole, was very active during pandemic and, and we sort of uh, turned inside and our solutions for remote learning were quite local. So what uh, functioned well in, in medical faculty might have not functioned so well in humanities, for example. So in, in that respect, maybe, maybe the, the role of uh, Teachers Academy during the pandemic wasn't so, so uh, important in this respect. But now, last but not least, it's Teachers Academy and student learning. I think student learning is the, in the very core of our teachers' profession. It's the, the, the main thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 we are sort of, a, and, and we, we do, do wish that students wish to learn, and we wish them to learn. So we have a common goal there. So, and uh, the first proposition was that uh, the activities of Teachers Academy have a, a pro, uh, promoted the quality of students' learning in my own teaching. So it's a very personal proposition, and, and we feel very strongly about it. So Teachers Academy made some in, impact on, on that one. And also within our disciplinary or, or scientific fields, the in, impact was good. And this is very strong. This I like, the last one, uh, that Teachers Academy really spread uh, this uh, teaching practice, good practices, across the uh, university and faculty, faculties. Okay, to summarize, no, uh, in fact, you can say that most, uh, several of the academic key goals have been achieved in 10 years. And it has really influenced the appreciation of teaching, but it, we should still further enhance it in unison faculties. It has disseminated the best practices in teaching and learning across the acad academic community. And being a, a TA fellow has been a very important step for the, for the fellows. But fellows also reported challenges in the teacher's career path. And in the five years, the, the inter, interdisciplinarity uh, and TA community, t t teacher's academy, academy has really created very fruitful communities of practice on various topics, which has successfully advanced collaboration across campuses and produced scholarly presentations and journal articles, which is good. I think, and that's lovely.
So here's the literature, some literature, and we end up here thanking you for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> brief, brief reflection, has the Teachers Academy been a success? My answer is entirely agree. Um, we have one more session. Where's the clicker? Yeah, sorry. One more session on the first part of our seminar, and that is to look at two people and their stories a little bit. So we have Terhi Ainiala. She's a university lecturer and a director at a bachelor program, and also a head of a department at the Faculty of Arts. And then we have Mia Siven, who is a vice dean for academic affairs and digitalization at the Faculty of Pharmacy. So uh, Mia and Terhi, can you step up here and we'll do a short interview with you um, about where, thank you. Here are the mics. Thank you. Sit there. I'll go on the other side. Here we go. There. So let's go to the prepared questions. I could ask other questions, but that probably not be fair to you guys. So, <laughs> so we'll we'll do the prepared ones uh, and talk about your career. We'll start with the first question: Why did you apply to the Teachers Academy? Yeah. Well, at that, at, at that time I was uh, developing teaching and enjoying uh, working with the students and, and uh, the development tasks with the teaching. And I was so happy to hear the previous uh, presentations, speakers, actually they did bring up the same things up that I, I was thinking mm. that what was the reason. So uh, I applied because I thought that uh, the Teachers Academy, it is a community that is very inspiring and it is focusing on the development of teaching and I felt that I want to be part of that family. Mm. I want to learn as a part of that family. And actually then when I uh, was accepted, I was extremely delighted. It was be before Christmas, I said that this is the best Christmas present that I've ever had. Mm. And, and then afterwards now I can say that really it has been uh, uh, extremely meaningful, meaningful for me and for my career and, and, and I enjoy and I'm so delighted to be part of this family. I would like to call we as a family. Mm. Mm. Terhi, why did you apply? Yeah, well, <laughs> Mia, Mia said it very well. We are a family. And, and why did I apply? Because I love to teach. <laughs> and, and, and I wanted to develop my skills in teaching, in supervising. And I wanted to learn more about pedagogy and, and also be able to reflect on these issues together with my colleagues in the Teachers Academy to have inspiring discussions. And, and, and certainly, I wanted to enjoy the, the company of other enthusiastic teachers, collaborate with teachers from various faculties. And certainly, I wanted to be awarded as a good teacher. <laughs> and, 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 There's nothing wrong with that, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and then, certainly, and I also try to increase the appreciation of teaching at our university. And, and, it also helped that there was this financial <laughs> support, this funding, and with the help of that, I was able, able then to, to do some drilling and, and new and innovating things in, in teaching in our community. Mm -hmm. so, it was, so it was very, very fruitful in many ways. Mm -hmm. How has the membership affected your career? Uh, or you as a teacher, that he could get to go first this time. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, in many, many ways, certainly. And just to pick up a couple, well, well, since I myself come from the linguistics and, and I am an onomastician, which means that, that I study and teach in onomastics, the study of names. And it is in, in very nature, very interdisciplinary multidisciplinary and, and combining, for example, linguistics, historic, cultural studies, urban studies, so on and so forth. And, and I have been able to, to learn new skills 
in this interdisciplinary field and ha I've been able to test new methods and, and for example to have inspiring innovative project courses on, on this subject. And, and, and I think that interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary approaches, they have always been in the focus at the Teachers' Academy, and it was a very good community in this sense. Well, then, second, uh, Eva mentioned here, here before us that, that there has been various working groups in our ac academy, and, and I have been active in, in the group of, of working life relevance. And, and it has very, been very new and innovative for me to kind of think more carefully about what kind of working life skills we do teach to our students. And, and, and in that way, we have been able to, for example, to organize a couple of workshops on these teams and, ha and have partners outside the university and also alumni who were actively asking us and, and solving problems and creating new ideas how to kind of improve the working life relevance, the working life skills in, in our teaching. And, and, and to my understanding, I think that the important and multiple roles of working life skills has now been taken better into account at the university level. And, and then the third thing is that, that I have been able, as, as I think all of us has been able to share good practices in teaching with colleagues at the faculty in our university, discussing and reflecting together with, <laughs> with colleagues and taking part on many working groups and also in the administration. And, and as you mentioned, I've, I'm a director of our bachelor program and I have been able to lead work, for example, the curriculum work, and it has been very, very kind of inspiring and fruitful. Oh. Mia. <laughs> well, yes, uh, uh, when I became the member of Teachers Academy, uh, it uh, gave me the possibility to really focus on uh, development of teaching. Mm -hmm. I had the mandate to do that, mm -hmm. and I had the mandate to do what I uh, was feeling so enthusiastic on, and then uh, you also mentioned the grant, and, uh, oh, <laughs> and the grant enabled for me uh, to make a, very, a couple of very wise recruitments uh, for my developmental projects. So uh, I was able to carry out uh, uh, with a boost all of those uh, development uh, projects that I had ongoing and then also widen uh, the network of my colleagues. So in that respect, uh, I'm very grateful uh, that I'm now a member of Teachers Academy because I have been involved in a new research-based uh, development projects. I have met new colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, made new uh, scientific publications with many of you. And, and at the faculty level, uh, I was uh, developing the um, a digitalization of our teaching. So at Faculty of Pharmacy, uh, we are very laboratory-oriented uh, uh, faculty, mm -hmm. and the pandemics came at that time, and we were in a trouble <laughs> because we could not be in the lab. So uh, also uh, the grant, it gave uh, the boost uh, to develop the different kind of uh, digital uh, learning environments at our faculty and really to focus on uh, supporting the students to learn in the, the laboratory but in the virtual laboratory and to have uh, the interactivity in there in the uh, learning environment and have uh, the uh, feedback at the same time and when when they are proceeding in the in the e environment so I would say I have learned from colleagues I have learned uh, to think in a pedagogical way uh, better than previously. And also, uh, I'm very grateful that I've, I have made so many of new friends, new colleagues, and new research fellows. And then, of course, if, if you ask about the career, well, at that time I was uh, uh, the degree program of our master program, but then for some reason, again, the vice dean of <laughs> academic affairs and digitalization. <laughs> Accidentally stumbled Acc into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Just.
for the sake of time, we're going to shorten the last question. <laughs> uh, what is the most important thing you've learned from your fellow members? Tere. The most valuable thing is to understand that, that, that we built up the community and we are together with our administrative staff and with our students. We are the university. It's us. We people. We are the university. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Mia. I totally agree with you, Terhi. <laughs> yeah. I also I have a short, uh, short conclusion. Uh, during this time, I have learned from you, from my colleagues, to uh, stand even more determinedly uh, to, for, and for the teaching. So that is the most important that I've learned from my colleagues. Do stand determinedly for teaching and development of teaching. Mm. It's valuable. Thank you, Terhi and Mia. All right, folks, uh, we have a break for 15 minutes and then we're going to look into the future.
Let's try to get the second portion ready to go. Please take a seat. Thank you. So now we're moving on uh, to the second portion of our seminar today, and that is called the future. And the first portion of this segment is the publication, drum roll, and of the vision and goals of the Teachers Academy. And there's a working group behind this work. Uh, Sam Popihilanen uh, is a member, has been a member of the board as well. Uh, Kaya Hiltunen, the current vice chair of the Teachers Academy. Uh, Lisa Carlson, also a current member of our board. And then for this group, uh, Jokke Hassa, who was the previous president of the Teachers Academy, and also a chair of the VISTA group who prepared the vision and goals statement. Uh, it was accepted uh, by the board in the March meeting, and this is the first time it will be publicized uh, to the community. So, Jokke, please come up. Here's your mic and your clicker. Hello. And clicking here. Yes, good. Okay, I'm very delighted and honored to uh, be able to present this work here today. I must first correct that uh, Sampo is technically the chair of uh, our group, but uh, couldn't make it here today, so I'm, I'm, I'm here instead. So we have heard already about the original vision and the aims for the Teachers Academy and how uh, well we have uh, succeeded in meeting those aims. And, and so these are now maybe the new vision or new goals, but maybe more appropriately, the renewed vision and goals, because as you will see, this very much reflects on what has been, uh, what we have uh, said already in the beginning. So just some background. So the, our working group started meeting uh, about two years ago, exactly. And um, there were a group of people who kind of wanted to uh, clarify the role of the Teachers Academy, uh, maybe to themselves, but also to other fellows, so that we would have some, some maybe some idea that if we want to work towards improving the standing of the Teachers Academy at the university, what should we, what could we do about it? So some maybe concrete or at least uh, some kind of guidelines what we could do. So the members were already, uh, the, the group has been a bit flexible. So some of me, myself, uh, Kaya, Lisa have always been there, Hanna as well, and Lisa, the other Lisa too. So just, I hope that I didn't forget anybody. So here are some key events on the journey starting in the 20th of April in spring 2021, when we had a workshop where we were kind of like reflecting on the working groups that uh, Teachers Academy then had, and also uh, creating some new working groups. So then some then these people who were interested in this uh, group, this kind of vision and strategy thinking, uh, decided to form a working group, and then we had our first meeting on 10th of May. We met about maybe once in a month or something, uh, and the first draft of our work was presented to the board on the 5th of November 2021. We got some feedback, uh, went back to the drawing boards and worked on it uh, until in uh, June 2022, we uh, discussed this in an open workshop during the vice rector's uh, summer meeting for pedagogical uh, staff at the, the Center for University Teaching and Learning and, and the Teachers Academy members were all invited to this workshop. Again, we got some feedback, worked on it, uh, presented a revised version last October to the board, some more feedback working on it, and finally, the 1st of March, we presented a version to the uh, student union representatives there was a lot of discussion, uh, approval, and also some comments. And, and finally, as uh, Eric mentioned, the final approval was in 
10th of on 10th of March this year and now we are here so we based our thinking on the kind of the teaching teacher academies founding regulations and and especially on the on the this one aim the kind of key aim that the academies aim is to promote the status of teaching at the university and then we also looked into the strategic plan and the values of the University of Helsinki and tried to uh, kind of fit our thinking along those lines as well, because we can't teach different than what the university teaches because we are part of the university after all. So this is um, this document or work is, is divided into three chapters. Uh, there's an overall vision, and then there is uh, then there are values, and then there are aims, which are sort of maybe more detailed. So the overall vision is to consolidate the status of teaching on a sustainable and permanent basis. So this comes quite directly from the founding regulations. But we wanted to add this, um, for example, the sustainable part here, and also kind of the consolidate verb says that we have already reached a high status of teaching. Does the teaching has already reached a high status at our university? We want to consolidate it um, instead of maybe saying that we want to achieve it because we, in some sense, we have already achieved it, but there's always room for improvement. And for the values, we adopted the four values of the University of Helsinki, which are truth and Bildung, which is civistus in Finnish, but we use the German word because there's no direct equivalent in English. Uh, then there is um, freedom and inclusivity. And we interpreted these values kind of through the lens of teaching and, and, and of our teachers' academy in particular. So first, truth. We teach our students to seek the truth, and we speak out for research-based and recent knowledge. We developed teaching uh, on the basis of research and evidence. So this is all about research-based, evidence-based, rational thinking. And, and we want to teach this, and in teaching we want to apply it. Bildung, in our teaching we pursue a broad and deep understanding of the surrounding world and its changes. We believe that teaching and learning constitute the foundation of scholarship and Bildung. So this means that we want to go beyond surface level facts to kind of deeper understanding of, of a society and of uh, the world, and so that is our aim in teaching as well. In freedom, we safeguard the freedom of teachers to choose the content and methods of teaching according to their own expertise and in line with a jointly agreed curriculum. Teachers must have the opportunity to participate in the planning and development of their own teaching. So in Finland, we have a tradition of uh, uh, freedom of teachers, meaning that teachers are able to, they, they, can, they can teach what they want and how they want. But of course, there is a uh, curriculum that uh, needs to be taught, uh, that is designed together. And we, uh, we think, we know, we, it, well, in our university, the teachers have the opportunity to participate, and we want to kind of safeguard this this freedom. Uh, inclusivity. We foster inclusivity, humanity, and equality, not only among the fellows of the Teachers' Academy, but also among all university teachers and all stakeholders and support networks related to teaching. We regard students as significant members of our com community and engage them in the planning and implementation of teaching. So here I, I don't have much to add. We want to, in, in, in teaching, we want to include like all parts, all, all, all 
parties from students to uh, teachers and also all the support networks and, and stakeholders as from like we want to engage them in an equal dialogue. That's how we want to uh, bring the teaching forward. And then the final part, like this uh, vision and values, I, I think that these are more sort of um, permanent. We are not going to give this up very easily. Uh, but then, uh, then, then the final part of the aims, they are sort of maybe more ephemeral or something that we can change from year to year if we want. But uh, some things that we kind of think that to, through those aims, we can bring these uh, values to life and we can uh, strive towards our common vision. So th these are, first of all, uh, the, the kind of, the, because we have already heard that the um, Teachers Academy is like foremost, uh, like most of all, it is, a, it is a network of accomplished teachers. It is a network and actually sort of apart from spending some grant money, the only way of us to influence things that are happening in the university is through our networks. And so we wanted to place this kind of in the in the first part to this that that our aim is to bolster discussion brainstorming and information exchange uh, between student organizations teachers the university of helsinki center for university teaching and learning the university leadership and administrative services and all other stakeholders and networks related to teaching because this is the way that we can develop teaching is together with all these networks that have something to do with teaching and and next uh, we want to enhance appreciation of teaching and teaching qualifications at the University of Helsinki we want to enhance the visibility of teaching and the teachers academy in university communications we want to enhance inclusivity collaboration and peer learning among teachers at the teachers academy and the university we want to enhance the well-being of students and teaching and research staff at the University of Helsinki. We want to enhance scholarship, research-based knowledge and learner-centered approach in teaching. We want to enhance teachers' opportunities to pursue the career path of an academic teacher and make progress on this path. We want to enhance sustainable development and equality in university teaching. We want to enhance the significance of pedagogical research in the assessment of academic qualifications. And we want to enhance public engagement with an emphasis on the significance of research-based knowledge and research-based teaching. And finally, these are lofty goals. So what can we do to uh, achieve this? It's, um, then I kind of throw the ball to you and to us. So our suggestion is that the Teachers Academy board should uh, examine these vision and aims regularly, maybe once a year or once in two years, and, and make some plans on how to pursue them in, the, in their activities. Secondly, the board should reflect the past activities uh, that have been done in light of these values and goals whether they were in line with them and whether we should change our activities or whether we should uh, uh, change our aims. And finally, we invite all the members of the Teachers Academy to work towards these goals, either separate, uh, individually in their own teaching and le uh, pedagogical leadership, or by joining some of the, our groups, the, uh, the board or the working groups, or by forming their own new working groups. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lot to do. Very interesting. Uh, we have two more uh, sessions in part of the future. So this is the kind of future that the the uh, Teachers Academy in University of Helsinki sees itself fulfilling and the kind of the direction that the academy wants to go toward. But now we're going to
change the, the uh, approach uh, or the viewpoint and go to Norway. And we're going to ask our colleague, Art Maza from the University of Nor uh, Oslo, to talk about the role of the teachers' academies in the future. If you think of that title is a, is a, is a mouthful, it is, and it's my fault. So it's not Arndt's fault, but the idea is, is to see, see what we could do um, to be relevant and vibrant in the future as leaders in the pedagogical change. Um, Armaso is a professor uh, of media and communications at the University of Oslo, and he is the outgoing chair of the Teachers Academy at the University of Oslo. Please, welcome. Here's the picture. So, uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Eric has already said that uh, uh, we're pressed for time, so I put my timer at 16 minutes and 50 seconds left. <gasps> so, congratulations. First of all, I'd say that uh, uh, my goal of coming here uh, is already fulfilled. Uh, it's been a very inspiring talk, uh, talks uh, preceding me, uh, because uh, we have more to learn from you than you from us. But uh, um, I'm asked to talk about the future, uh, so maybe we'll, I'll, we'll have something to say about that as well. But uh, first, when uh, I was invited to come, I thought, hmm, didn't any of the Swedes want to come? And I was reminded uh, by the, the, the Bible, the, what do you call it, the um, parable uh, of, uh, of the wedding feast in, in, the, in the Gospel Matthew. Uh, where the king invited to his son's celebration and no one would come, so he slaughtered them all. And uh, then he invited everyone off the street, the, both the bad and the good, as it says. I'd looked it up. And, uh, but one of them was dressed not very nicely, so he had them beat up. So I, I, I put on my suit and shined my shoes, and I was glad that uh, I did that because I heard, you know, that was the first thing that was addressed today, the dress code. Um, but anyway, uh, as uh, we've already heard, uh, the title uh, is long. Uh, it's not mine, so I asked ChatGTP for some suggestions. Uh, I thought they were more snappy uh, in a way, but uh, in any case, what I'll talk about, no matter the, the title, is basically two things, challenges and possibilities for the future. Uh, and uh, I'll start a little bit with context bef uh, before I go into the challenges and possibilities because I want to say a little bit about the Teachers Academy in Oslo in order to, for you to understand where I come from and, and my perspective. So this, where, you know, it's not a coincidence that I thought, why well, did that this week? Because we're very young. I mean, we're... Um, the teacher merit uh, scheme was put in place in 2020. And um, these guys uh, are the first seven that were appointed or um, given that status as teachers of merit. But actually, uh, the university, uh, first of all, didn't have, like here in Helsinki, uh, this was not a top-down thing from the... The, the leadership of the university. This was an external mandate that all higher education uh, institutions should have some scheme of, um, of teachers of merit in order to raise the status. So this was pushed up on the university and it turned out that, well, of course, uh, uh, Oslo is the oldest uh, university, no longer the largest, but we're similar in many ways to Finland, but I think you're a bit more forward-leading when it comes to, to teaching, which is not a surprise because all the world is kind of thinking, look to Finland when we're talking about teaching. And this, I think, also is the case for teaching at the university level. Um, but when we were all um, appointed uh, teachers of merit, uh, the university had no thought about what should we do, really. They had no idea or any suggestion of, of having a pedagogic academy or a teacher's academy. So, basically, the first thing I did was, because I like working together with people, and I think collaboration is the main strength. Um, so, I put up a Microsoft Teams team uh, the day after we were all awarded, and I said, shouldn't we start cooperating and, and sharing? 
Um, and out of that grew the idea of, of uh, putting up a, a teacher's academy. Uh, so we actually did this by our own kind of initiative. And we used maybe half a year to kind of formalize it. And then, and then everyone just pointed at me and why don't you do it? And uh, okay, so I'm, I, I was the uh, chair for the first couple of years. And then we kind of have formalized it a little bit more. So now we have set in place an ingoing chair, a chair and an outgoing chair. So in January, I, was, uh, I went into the role of an outgoing chair. Um, and um, uh, what we hoped uh, that we would grow quickly, but you know, the second year of the Teachers of Merit, only six were awarded, and then last year, only two. So we're only 15 people, we're very small. Uh, and then adding to that, um, when we all applied for the Teacher of Merit positions, this was in March 2020, so basically the same time as everything locked down. So our whole kind of history is kind of uh, started in Corona. And as you all know, uh, cooperation and meeting people w uh, was extremely difficult at that time. But we managed to do that on teams and, uh, and etc. Uh, uh, my feeling is that we're not only those kind of people, but we were all thrown into kind of uh, the, uh, when we got the status of, of uh, Teachers of Merit, we were all uh, thrown out into kind of a crisis operation. Uh, we were kind of like the, the go-to people for just fixing the pandemic. So this is actually much more like I, I, I view the Teachers Academy in, in Oslo, kind of Ghostbusters. Uh, the only difference, which is a major one, is uh, was it me yeah, that said I wanted to apply for the Teachers Academy because I wanted to join a family? Or was, was that me? Yeah? And that was a really touching statement and a very beautiful statement, and which is not, I think, the case because we're, we're not that family tight-knit kind of Ghostbuster team. We're basically each of us uh, in our own faculty trying to ghostbust the faculty in a sense. <laughs> but we try to work together as well. We're eight faculties at the university and seven of the faculties have representatives from um, uh, in the Teachers Academy or uh, the Mer uh, Teachers of Merit. Um, the one, one major difference is that, as I heard today for the first time, HIPE is not allowed to be part or part of this, whereas in, in Oslo, the equivalent to HIPE, the um, pedagogic uh, faculty, uh, are allowed to that, do that. And of course, they have a, uh, <laughs> they have a kind of um, head start because they're used to doing research on teaching methods, etc. So out of the 15, four of them are from, from the pedagogic uh, faculty, uh, which is positive and has other implications um, uh, as well. Now, um, what we were all thrown into was trying to kind of set up uh, teaching because uh, things were not in place for meeting that challenge. Uh, and so, m a little bit my personal story, I I'm come from the Faculty of Humanities that were probably maybe least prepared for do, uh, to do this. Um, and so what I did or what I was asked to do by the faculty board is try to set up a kind of uh, lab, teaching lab, uh, which we called HOF Studio, the Humanity Studio, and where we kind of try to, to support the 250, 300 teachers at the faculty and help them with producing digital material, uh, methods, etc., etc. And now that's a, a kind of strong and, and up and running um, unit. And I'm not the only one doing this. This happened also at other faculties. So about half of, of, uh, uh, of uh, the seven of us, uh, or four out of seven, we all kind of became um, part of this, uh, this uh, kind of crisis uh, teaching, uh, sharing, collaborating, learning methods. And also, 
what what happens is that a lot of the my colleagues the first year uh, were kind of already people that were had as we heard from the evaluation here had some kind of prior prize or uh, had an important role in teaching so several of them were already leading centers of excellence in teaching today actually uh, a new center of election uh, uh, excellent in teaching was rewarded to one of our, our members and that was the first one for interdisciplinary teaching which heartened me a lot so um so there are now four centers of excellence and then a couple of other types of kind of more uh, labs uh, going into teaching um, now uh, so that's a little bit about our background and i can come more back to that if we have time during the panel discussion um, but what an, um, a major challenge for us uh, as a teaching academy is that we've been so busy with kind of working in our local faculties and and helping foster collaboration there that we have had relatively uh, compared to that little time to work interdisciplinary within the teachers academy which is something i miss and, and the other people miss uh, but which is certainly one of our goals uh, going on to uh, the future now challenges i I'm, i think we all are kind of um, um, working with in macro trends and uh, and frames um, that uh, both uh, um, influence the way our teachers academies were set up originally but also in, in uh, influence how we work uh, forward so the first uh, is that uh, as the teacher academy it was put in place by external forces the government said you ha all have to raise the quality and just a couple of weeks ago uh, we got a new white paper which is long awaited and that kind of signals a lot of changes in norway uh, it's about the future of higher education future needs and competences in norway and the workforce and they deal with kind of macro trends and also with structural changes both when student financing uh, and how the whole university sector is going to be financed so these are important macro kind of uh, and structural um, forces or, or um, uh, affordances that that kind of influence how we we f face the future now it's this this particular um, white paper might not be you know it might be other trends and other forces that are that you meet but i think some might be overlapping for instance um, as in denmark before um, both the humanities and social sciences are kind of single out as as we need to show that we're relevant and com com contribute to, to the tomorrow's future uh, and uh, there are two main challenges the twin digital green transition and also kind of labor shortages uh, that are, are um, uh, singled out we in norway lack health workers it people craft workers high school teachers so we're all um, uh, made aware that you need to address this and we also need uh, more technical skills and we need kind of the the more of the 21st century skills that we've been reading about for many years and working on some of us uh, namely collaboration critical thinking problem solving the soft skills that we need to face the future not only the hard skills and so these are broad and big um, uh, uh changes and forces that are kind of deal with the frames that we operate in the second big challenge is the kids are not okay i was intrigued hearing that uh, the evaluation here where you said that well you know it actually f more say that that they don't get that much inspiration or they don't have those many talks with students anymore and i wonder if that's also due to to these broad changes when it comes to the students that we meet um, we know from international studies and and trends that at least in the uk and the us um, you know from the 90s onwards kids were a lot less together 
a lot more indoors, much more online. Uh, t uh, social media developed partly because they needed places to meet online because they couldn't meet outside. Uh, we know that there is more and more research on, on the mental health and the, uh, the possible problems of social media and, and the online world, uh, which influences aspects many believe, I think, um, on, for instance, perseverance, grit, Sisu perhaps. Uh, we certainly know that book reading among youths is going down in Norway, not among adults, but among youths and especially young boys, 16 to, to 24, it's, it's, it's plummeting. And uh, last year is the first time I had to buy this book, Teaching Unprepared Students. Um, because we, there has been a big discussion um, s starting in January in Norway about uh, the challenge more and more university student, uh, teachers uh, uh, feel that they face with students that are unprepared reading long uh, demanding texts, for instance. And this, these are some of the, the clippings from this debate. Uh, and I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, kids are, are you know, everything was better before and uh, kids today are useless, etc. But um, it is a new challenge for us as teacher, I think, teachers, I think, because when I studied, you know, you, first of all, we were about the third of the, the population of students, right? So in my field, it's, it's been a tremendous increase just since I graduated, actually. 300% growth in teaching. And, and, uh, and at that time, when we were students, first of all, a lot came from backgrounds where studying was usual and they knew how to study or they had expectations about it or uh, if they didn't, you know, you were expected to to sink, float or sink, you know, you weren't kind of just expected to, okay, so you don't know how to read an academic text, let me help you. But now today, uh, there are so many, I think we just have to address this and take it seriously in a different way uh, to, to, you know, work against people f dropping out, etc. So we need to kind of develop new tools to get uh, students on board, uh, I think. So also when it comes to the future, this, this uh, white paper I mentioned also signals radical changes in um, adult education. We need to bring, you know, reskilling, upskilling are, are terms that, uh, that we are facing and, and they are also addressing uh, the structure in, in, in new ways structurally. So we need to kind of face them in a different way. Now the third challenge is herding cats. Uh, now, uh, coming out of the pandemic, it's a challenge to kind of motivate teachers to do anything uh, differently, just that they want to go back, a lot of them, to the th way things were before the pandemic. And it's a kind of pandemic fatigue, I think. So, you know, inspiring people, getting people to work together and learning new skills is not easy. Um, and although um, teaching has a higher status now than 10 or 20 years ago, it still is a bit uh, challenging bringing people on, on board in a sense. Now I have a couple of more minutes to talk about solutions and directions. Um, now I went back to some of the, the original literature from practices of scholarship. And actually, this was, um, this was um, echoed in one of the slides you showed. Uh, here it says, excellent teaching is marked by the same habits of mind that characterizes other types of scholarly work. Uh, and how do academics work best together? Well, in research groups with clear research questions, some cure, some, something they're curious about, something they want to, research gap they want to fill, etc. And I think we need to work that way. And I understand that that's the way you are thinking and working on. And I think that for the future. Now, as for the challenges, I don't think we should do like, uh, the Ivy League universities in the States that, you know, when ChatGPT came, they just said, well, then we'll just stop 
uh, using uh, um, uh, the test scores in order to accept students. I think that's going backwards into the future, just bringing, you know, okay, we'll just fix it with pen and paper. So we kind of need ways to, to do this in another way. And here is an example of uh, things we have done locally at my uh, university, not because of uh, this, the chat GPT, but, but because we, as a humanities faculty, need to teach students and have them learn how to use other skills than just writing an essay. Uh, we need to teach them how to work together. We need to teach them how to work on pr real world problems like sustainability. Uh, a lot of them are going to do podcasts or make video essays instead of writing uh, a long uh, article. Uh, and we also have like academic interviews uh, where they prepare things in mind maps, etc. But then they get kind of a more real world like way of addressing this. So I, I think we need to kind of change and be a little bit more forward leading in working together and teaching our students to work together. Now this is a um, website of, of the um, uh, the lab that I was talking about and one of the more heartening things is the list of other learning centers that you see there. And also uh, one of the teams um, that I am a member of, which is called Teaching Development. And it's broader than the Teaching um, Academy, Teachers Academy. But now we see that, uh, you know, deans of studies or other people are joining that uh, team and they're sharing across uh, the university. And this is the first time I've seen in my, you know, 25 uh, roughly years at the university. Uh, this happening across uh, faculties. It's much more been a tradition of silos and we've had really no arenas to meet and share and exchange. And, and the 15 of us, we're not big enough to do that. We need critical mass to do that. And you have a critical mass, we don't. But now we see that this, this thought about sharing, developing across the university is, is starting to happen. So too long didn't read, uh, didn't read, there are challenges, but things are never so bad that it can't be made worse with accordions. Thank you. Thank you. If you wait just a minute, Arne. University of Helsinki is big on building, so you get our bag. Thank you very much. With other stuff in it. Uh, my wife has uh, made me promise never to bring any more tote bags, but I'll give it to my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it's her birthday tomorrow, so that's why I can't join you for, for your party tonight, because I have to get home to my daughter, and I'll bring her this. <laughs> it worked out. It worked out. Thank you. Thank you. Please take a seat here. All right. Uh, we're close to the end, and the last session is a panel discussion about the future of university teaching we want to work for. So this is not guesswork, who knows what it is. This conversation is about what we want. So that's kind of uh, the approach we're using today. You know Tina Eriksson already? Why don't you come up, Tina? Uh, Susanna Ninistu Sivuranta is the Director of Development for Teaching and Learning Services. Well, my boss is boss. Uh, Auli Tum, you already know her. Please welcome Auli, and then Onni Neumann is a member of the board of the Student Union of University of Helsinki. Onni, please step up, and Art Maso was just the person uh, you saw talk at this time. So please give a big uh, round of applause to all our panelists. We'll get the mics. Mic number one here, and there's the other one. So I have a prepared list of questions, one for each of the panelists, and then one that we're gonna, I'm going to ask of all of you. And we're going to start with yes. Susanna. Yes. Uh, why did we undertake this future of teaching project we've had during this year? What was the reason, and why was this the time to do it? I think if we heard the last speaker, we know the answer for this. But uh, I think the reason was that, of course, it's always uh, a good time to discuss about developing of teaching and, and how important learning is. 
But especially after the pandemic, we had this kind of uh, time loop when we were middle of the history and future, kind of didn't know where to go. And we heard a lot of discussions uh, all around in the university about that, that what is happening now? What kind of future do we have? Do we have a future? And we also realized that we had a lot of those kind of emotions uh, that needed to get some words and shared words and understanding of that, that what is actually the future like? Okay, we don't know what is the future like, but with this um, kind of talk around in the university, with this scenario work, with this celebration of teaching and learning during this year, also the Teachers Academy 10 years, so all those you know, points, they were kind of there, and then we decided maybe with Auli to saying to Sari that wouldn't it be a good idea to have kind of this big discussion uh, about that, what is the future of teaching and learning. Guy was of course on the game right away, and also all the wise deans in the faculties, they, they also agreed that yes, we have to do kind of this big discussion of that, what is the future of teaching and learning in the university. Mm. So, Aul, you've been, as Susanna said, one of the key, key, key persons during this Future of Teaching project. Mention a few key issues and themes that have been discussed during this year. And uh, are there any surprises about what was taught? Yes, um, I think that I have two very big things in mind. On the other hand, uh, referring to what Susanna already said, that what this uh, scenario work has meant for all of us, so that we had... Uh, professionals who are who who are really good in guiding us, who were really good in guiding us uh, through the whole process, so that we were able to uh, discuss a lot and uh, think uh, from the different angles and viewpoints. And they also brought a lot of input that uh, what are the things were on which we can influence and can decide, and what are the factors that we need to take into account. Uh, but uh, we can't necessarily do anything for us. So as we have experienced the pandemic and the war and the uh, rise of prices and the, uh, the money issues, so I think that these were the things that really opened. We all know them, but they really opened our eyes that whatever can happen, but still what are the things that we want to stick on? and what we want to guarantee and that happens at the, in teaching and learning at the University of Helsinki. I think that that was one new thing that be, became much more crystal clear. And the other one was uh, that uh, uh, continuously uh, we ended up talking about the, uh, the community, a feeling of uh, community, collegiality, uh, interactions and importance of interactions with students, long uh, relationships uh, uh, and support uh, for students learning and how we take care of them not only academically but really that they feel that uh, they are safe and this is a safe place where you can learn and develop so i think that these were at the end uh, the things that we really talked quite a lot and we are, maybe it is also the reason because they were so so much challenged so that uh, we are in a very new situation that, that how we should do this in the, in the current, <laughs> current university and in the future. Tina, you have been following the Future of Teaching project from a perspective of a university teacher, of course the chair of the Teachers Academy and now also as a vice dean for academic affairs at the Faculty of Arts. Have you had any important aha moments or insights during this year uh, about the future of teaching? Maybe I can summarize it into three C's that have been already mentioned here, I think, many times. But I will start with, first with the uh, uh, word curiosity that actually aren't brought us uh, in a very beautiful slideshow and everything. And I think that I have, I'm a great belie believer that that remains in, in the, among us teachers, that we will still try to seek truth in our research and teach the, uh, the, the, 
students so that that doesn't disappear, whatever plans in the future we do make so that we don't change that much. And then another C was this community building that is so visible and so important for us uh, at the Teachers Academy, but it's obviously part of uh, our well-being and it's part of our let's say teachers' identity, that we need each other, and we have to, uh, not just to look at the micro, <laughs> microwave machine, but, <laughs> but just to be in a place like we wanted to organize here, this as a face-to-face event. And then uh, another is uh, very near to that, that third C is like a cooperation, mm -hmm. that we need to cooperate with each other uh, as a teachers, but also with students, because students, like we as a teachers, we have felt a little bit alone during the pandemia. And we should for now not really forget the pandemia, but to remember the good things from that and now look forward. And I think these three C's are the one, one of some keys to that. Mm. Thank you. Onni, you represent the student perspective in this panel. What kind of teaching do the students want to see in the future? Uh, thank you. This is a very good question, and I think there's no simple answer to this. And uh, of course, during the pandemic and after that, especially uh, these new solutions with teaching like remote uh, uh, solutions and hybrid solutions have been a hot topic. And uh, although there is a lot of discussion, it's very hard to say what would be like uh, a conclusive answer to this. I, I think that uh, these new opportunities are, uh, well, opportunities more than threats, uh, but they have also brought new challenges uh, seen during the pandemic uh, with the community and with building the community and the networks that are a big part of the academic world and its uh, influence on uh, the society in general. So uh, there's a lot to think about, but uh, I, I would say that students mostly at this point are optimistic with uh, uh, the new methods of teaching that have been av uh, available now. Hmm. Arndt, what kind of discussion is going on at the University of Oslo about the future of teaching? Of course, you shared a lot about that already. I shared, there... I shared some, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I'll say something I didn't say. Mm. And uh, uh, one of the differences between the Teachers Academy and, and here, uh, and our goals and our kind of internal charter is that we also have a bullet point saying we want to contribute to the political discussion about teaching in Norway. And because Oslo traditionally has perhaps had the role that you have here in Finland, we are also in position to do that. And, and all of us are, uh, are have been, uh, we have a lot of informal influence at our uh, university. We have, you know, we're ghostbusters everywhere and we sit on committees, etc. Et but we also have, because uh, we're basically the only uh, teachers academy that is vocal, perhaps there are some that I don't know of. Uh, so we have also written a couple of, of kind of opinion pieces in, in academic newspapers signaling what we think, what our answer was. And the last thing we wrote this fall was uh, directed at the students. We need to take our responsibility for t uh, learning environment better. And we're all used to kind of teaching in class and learn uh, how you teach in, in the kind of times that we're a lot of teachers. But when you talk to everyone here, I'm sure that going back to your time as a student, you will talk about sitting in the canteen or a smoking room as we had there, or just talking about uh, learning, meeting people, partying with people, all that which is an important part of learning environment, but that we have outsourced to the students uh, or individual kind of uh, initiative. Uh, whereas we see now that they don't self-organize. The students don't form colloquial groups, reading groups. They hardly party together. And so we need to t take that, that kind of important part of learning. Uh, more. Um, we have to take a role in that. It doesn't mean that we... I'm going to go with you for a party. Uh, but it means that we kind of have to kind of set things in place that they meet each other and process learning. 
And so that's one part. And the second, which is touched upon, is kind of the mix between physical uh, studies and, and online studies, which I think we, we, don't, we can't go back to the way it was. Uh, we have to learn from what was good and what was bad. And we don't know enough about what, what are the challenges and the good things. You know, some of the teachers I mentioned, they just say, when the pandemic works, so I'm never going to open a computer again. And that's not the right attitude. But there are certain, certainly ways that are terrible with uh, online teaching, like brainstorming, for instance. Brainstorming in the class with 30 people or online, not good, right? Uh, but there are other ways that we could use it. And so we, I, I totally agree with the previous director and, and previous speakers that we need to develop the methods and find ways of working with these new tools. And then the last thing I, I would say is that leadership at the universities as big as ours, they have no problem with having information horizontal. And so they know what's going on. They don't work in silos. They meet other people. Um, and the people in the teachers' academy uh, that are currently in Oslo, we also have, we're fortunate, so we have a lot of contacts. But most teachers don't. They work in silos in small departments, in small groups. They don't know what's going on there or there. So we need to take, and because leaderships, uh, uh, and that's not uh, unique to universities. That, happens in all big organizations, sharing and disseminating information and, and kind of having innovation happen because of you know, serendipity is so hard. And it's, it's hard online, but we can, as I show with the Teams uh, room, also use tools to make this happen. So that's the, yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> The, fi the final question for, for all the panelists is, what is the future that you want to see and work for? Only you want to start? Or not? Well, we can go in order also. Okay. But, yeah. Oli, you want to go first? Yeah, of course, uh, in university, uh, community and uh, learning and teaching and what kind of learning I, I really want to support is that there is a possibility for students to go on their way so that they can study what they are interested in, what they are curious about, what they are <laughs> having joy uh, with studying. They receive support uh, from researchers who know their field, who also are uh, uh, scholarly in a sense that they know how to teach. They are enthusiastic and committed, and they also take care of, of, of students' learning and, and uh, their colleagues as well. They also take responsibility of, of um, the broader community and uh, put, uh, putting initiatives and innovations forward. Uh, instead of sticking to same old things or doing similar things all the time. And then I would like to see a, a university as a community for learning uh, that is, as I said in my <laughs> earlier, earlier response, so that it is uh, academically and um, like intellectually stimulating, uh, but also safe uh, for different kinds of uh, humans and uh, individuals, and, and I think that those are the things that I really want to maintain yeah. or even cultivate further. Mm -hmm. Ondi, you want to go next? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, well, what I think from a student's perspective is that uh, we are going to a direction where things are uh, all, all the more like individualistic. Uh, and I think this also will reflect on uh, like this uh, phase of life when uh, young adults develop their sense of identity very much. And uh, uh, the way, for example, professional uh, identity has uh, many ways def defined uh, the way people see themselves. And I, I think that's something that's in a bit of a lowering trend at this point. And especially with after the pandemic, like uh, what, what is the community that people define themselves mostly based on is a question that will be a lot, a lot more visible in the future, I think, and uh, a sort of, sort of an increased individualism, I think, is a is, is a trend. And uh, with this, like the remote. 
remote uh, arrangements with the studies have been something that's uh, that's a uh, lot requested but at the same time it is uh, a bit contradictory with the community perspective and it makes uh, uh, interesting interesting like a narrative for this uh, this development that uh, what are the communities that uh, based on people develop their identities in the future i think mm. if this makes very sense. interesting yeah, yeah. Susan. Thanks. I could say only that I agree with them, but, but I also want to point out that um, I hope that we find kind of a new balance in that, that we are happy here together. Because after the pandemic, we had quite, well, we saw the polarization, we had this exceptional experience, and we all um, kind of realized that those things that we thought that are always there, kind of that you can go to the library, you can meet your friends and your loved ones and be with them uh, face to face, it was suddenly gone. And now uh, we have more words, emotions, experience to discuss about these things together and try to find the balance, not in a romantic or, or idealistic way, but really to have, have this kind of answer that we can understand that, of course, everyone as an individual is a unique one, and we have different kind of ideas of that, what is the best kind of university. But I hope that now we have more understanding to see that my opinion is not the only one. There is no right solutions. There, there is many kind of solutions for, for future university. And I hope that we will find that balance, which is safe for everyone, and we can really feel that we we are taking, we can care each other, and we can be loved in the university as unique individuals. Tina. Yes. I want to continue what uh, Susanna said here, and you know, uh, hope to see the university that can continue these values, for example, what we have at the University of, of Helsinki and now at the Teachers' Academy. Because they are values that not all the universities and not all the countries and nations have. In this uh, world of fake news and all this kind of a disinformation, I think that our position as ed educators and uh, as a students ourselves is more important than ever. So I think that we can continue that sort of a belief that our, uh, our work is very important. And uh, the finally, I want to say that we are pop. That means that people uh, have uh, power. So we are people of power in that sense. So I, I'm a great believer in that sense that we can, we can make a change and we can educate our students to make the, the change in the future. All right. I, I just want to ask you if you could adopt us. <laughs> uh, we, it's, it's better than just copying you. Uh, if you could just adopt us, that would be good. Uh, I think you're doing a lot right. And now I will, uh, it's very inspiring to hear your thoughts about it. And w w a main takeaway for me is that the university leadership has put enough resources and incentives into making a critical mass making it possible to share. And if we don't have that kind of top-down uh, resources uh, and commitment in, into kind of uh, actually taking the initiative of a teacher's academy and, and building on that in cooperation, I think we're going to struggle. Um, yeah. Please adopt us. <laughs> I think the Anytime. Finns really like to end on a positive note when a foreigner says nice things about us. <laughs> So if there are no more thoughts that you want to... I'll my account number afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't tell Arndt that you're supposed to say that, but I'm really glad you did. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for the seminar. Thank you, panel. Can you get an applause for the panel? Uh, impromptu, I will say two things. Uh, I've been a coordinator for just a less than a half or more than a half a year. This is an amazing community. It's just amazing. The energy that, the, the, that, you, that you bring and how you develop the university. So it's been, a, been an honor to be a coordinator so long and it's been an honor to facilitate this party we have today and there's another party coming. So with this, thank you everyone. Thank you. <laughs>
And thanks to everybody on the lines as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. Hope to see you here.